what's up thank you so much for watching i'm really really pumped to interview a fantastic subject today uh we have of like a feather fame will kill will will what's up, what's up? welcome good to see you dude yeah, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm so pumped about this this release, man. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure to work with you. And uh, I'm just uh, really, really lucky to work with such a talented guy and to have you up here on the show. So, hey, thanks a lot. Likewise, man. Likewise. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's get into it, man. I mean, uh, one of the things that, like, I, you know, I first heard you through Ian uh, Echo Zoo. And uh, I was really like uh, the 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 tracks that you guys have done. Like you, you just have this like polished sound that just really just sounds very complete and refined. You know, you got your own style going on, and you're really able to. Uh, you know, I, I I get the feeling that you're really able to get out the performance that that is in your head. Uh, when I talk to Ian. And when I work with Ian, um, you know, I, he's able to get his results by just being like relentless with the amount of time that he puts into the tracks and stuff. Um, and I was just wondering, like, you know, when you're do when you're doing vocals and stuff, it's not, you know, you, it's it's much more in the moment thing. So I was hoping you could tell uh, me a little bit about how you kind of cultivated your ability to deliver like that, because, man, it is sounds pretty nice my man pretty nice cool yeah man i mean i think we we created the songs from scratch and the first day um when we did uh those of the dark side it was the first song we did together um we just kind of like started jamming on like i hopped on his moog and started just messing around and he was on the midi fighter and, and just cooking up beats and we were just vibing uh and then and started laying something down. It's just we just witnessed the evolution, the creative evolution together. Um, uh, from that point, so it's it's been great to to do things like that from scratch. And like I've I've gained a lot, you know, from people like like him as well, especially on the engineering side too. Like that's another like it's just like this whole year I was like you know, had to like mix a bunch of stuff myself. So I'm like, all right, it's good that I've worked with guys like that. So um yeah i mean when it comes to the vocals you know you just know in your gut when you have the bed laid out that's good enough to like it's just worthy to lay on and you know you know what you're going to say and it, in other words once once the vibe is coming together the evolution is there then um you know what you know what's coming to you so word wise um, so when you, um, you know, when you were developing your, your singing abilities, uh, was there any particular, uh, training that, that you did or like, um, I don't know. I mean, I have one, one of my friends who has one of those apps that like measures your, your tuning accuracy. And, uh, I, I thought that was, that was pretty cool. They have like training exercise and stuff, but like, how, how did, how did you train? How did you, how did you get to where you are as a vocalist? I didn't really start singing to like. I don't know, early twenties maybe. Thirty five now, so like it's been a while now, but like I didn't really I knew I could you know, sing to some point, but I was, you know, kinda like just doing my acoustic looping vibe and started gigging and you know and then I had to like learn songs, so I was like, All right, cool. So um yeah did the Berkeley thing in Boston and uh, all that, but, um, um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it was pretty early, man. So, I mean, it was just kind of through songwriting and, and production. It's just like, I started singing out of a necessity, but then I was like, got more into it. So. So, um, w when, uh, when did you know you were, uh, you were you were gonna like you know really give it a go as a singer like because i mean you found yourself on stage there was a necessity to to sing um but wh where does that necessity come from what was the what was the turning point that you were like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna be the singer yeah it's just like 
you know, bands in high school and like college, and then like, you know, you you got end up another front man that's like, well, maybe not cutting it or not not your vibe, and they're like, and then you kind of like have this inner urge to like show them how to sing the tune, and then like, well, why don't I just like be the front man of the band or something? You know, it's like and then it becomes like that. It's like, so that's kind of what it how it unfolded, so to speak. Um, so, uh, what, uh, what sorts of other, uh, other projects can we, uh, can we look up? Like what, what, what are, what are some, uh, some pieces that you're proud of? I've got a collaboration I did with Darko, D-V-R-K-O. Um, it's called Broken Famous. There's a bunch of remixes out on that. Um, with the Kill Will name is relatively fresh. Um, in the last year I've kind of like flipped it, um, to that name as I was using my original, you know, Will Champlin name before. Um, I re- released a lot of music on that, but, you know, algorithmically it's like, it got me nowhere kind of using my own name. So I had to change things up a little bit. So within the last year, I've, I've kind of like, especially during the lockdown, I'm like, all right, if I got to like throw some shit to the wall, let me, let me, I got a, a bunch of house tracks I've done too. So, and just for fun and i'm like i started out with those and i'm like let me just get these out and then other cooler bigger collaborations started happening as well so um this is called, called chasing fire with d groove from brazil that caught some heat um what else and i got another upcoming project with um just a trio of us me and two other dudes it's called the uh, called gummy bear and that's more of, I want to say, like the Rufus de Soul uh, lane, um, which, you know, with a lot, a lot more, a little more guitar work on it. So, so a little like, um, so you play all kinds of, uh, all kinds of instruments uh, and produce and everything. Um, uh, can you, can you list off uh, the, the instruments that you play? Well, mostly um, a lot of guitar, um, quite a bit of keys too, um, especially chord wise and all that, like composing and all that. Um, I mean, I I watch a lot of like like the church players play, so I picked up a lot of those chords too. Like, so, just over the years, learning it. Or uh, do you like? Uh... You know where where does the idea start for you? Idea, I mean, there's various. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Um, so I mean, it could be like while I'm hiking or j- jogging, and I sing something into the phone as a riff, and then I kind of imagine it how what riff I would play on the guitar, and then how I would, you know, chop it up or something later, and kind of manipulate it to you know, um, watch the evolution of it. But, um, that's kind of where I, uh, where I started. Um, it, it sometimes will come from just my pure, you know, mind, or sometimes I'll actually have the instrument and, and, uh, sitting down and playing like outside or something. And then I go lay it down and I'm like, if it's really hyping me, I'll be like, Oh shit, I gotta go lay this down and, you know, chop from there. Uh, so you sing guitar riffs into your phone, then play the guitars and then work your way up to the vocal? Or do you start with the hook? Or, uh, you know, how does the workflow typically go? Sometimes. I mean, sometimes it'll be like a bass line. I'll, 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 I'll get in the phone. And sometimes I'll even take the phone sample, throw it in Ableton. And for some reason, the compression in the iPhone is like dope as hell. I'll, I'll actually make chops out of it. But, Man, um, uh, I, I was once, uh, you know, traveling with a really great photographer and he had all these insane cameras and he was showing me his photos from the party and I was like, what's, uh, you know, what's the best camera? And he was like, the best camera to use is the one you have. I was just like, yes, you know? So yeah, I've been sampling my iPhone ever since. Yeah, man. Um, there, there's, a, there's a couple of attachments, like Lewitt Audio makes one, Zoom makes a couple of cool little attachments that like, takes the 
compression of the iPhone and then some. That's kind of cool too. But um, Jer one I mean, MP88. I really like that one. The little lightning condenser mic. That thing is tight. Sounds really good. Sick. Yeah, I used it, used it on a bunch of tracks. Where, so um, uh, how did you learn keys? I mean, you mentioned uh, you mentioned being inspired by church players. That's that's not easy. Uh, did you take lessons, or how how did you figure out how to play keys? For sure. Um, you know, I was younger, and then then I went went out to Berkeley and studied a lot more. Um, and keys more specifically at actually. Berkeley. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So um. Uh, you know, you, you have a really kind of defined uh, sort of style as a vocalist. Like it's really easy to um, it's really easy to pinpoint that. Um, do you have any uh, do you have, um, you know, any words for someone else who's perhaps uh, trying to find their style, trying to find their voice? Uh, how, how, how did you find yours? The most of the heavy lifting in the track is done by this one drum kit. A lot of people will just continuously ignore drum sound design for like, you know, huge portions of their career. And they'll wonder why, why their music isn't like hitting people right, you know? And it's like, we don't want to hear you play someone else's beat. You know, we want to hear your beat. Now, once you know how to make them, and you understand that it's easy, because it is easy once you do the chorus, then your tracks are gonna be so much more expressive, and they're gonna have a real authentic texture that is undeniably yours, where you can speak and express yourself through the drums. I mean, I've, I found mine through, through just grinding, like, you know, listening, listening to New Horizons, and. Yeah, broadening my horizons, uh, everything to, you know, vibey indie music to to bass music to like the stuff on Westwood that I dig a lot. Um, like Moon Tricks has been growing on me a lot lately. Those those dudes are dope. Um, maybe bust out my banjo again. That's like all right, cool. So um, yeah, I mean, I think. Progression is everything. Evolution is everything, and um, you know, keep broadening horizons. You know, because some will get rusty, and some will you get bored of. And and you, you the sooner, the more you know, like what you're bored of, then the better aim you'll have, like what to help you shape your sound. You know, influence wise. Um, so. You found that uh, that that picking things specifically that you're bored of and pick, picking things specifically to avoid helped you to to shape your voice. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff I grew up on. On one hand, um, let you know, legendary, you know, music, maybe the rock till soul, like Bill Withers and Chicago and other other acts like that. But then, you know, there's new people like, like Chet Faker is like another influence. Probably them, him, like um, Ryax and others. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember all the names, but um, yeah, I mean, it's new and old for sure. Are there any goals you're working towards? Yeah. Um, so I got the the gummy bear projects one go. We're about twenty songs deep now. Um, we're talking to we're talking to a couple managers right now, a couple investors. That's that's going pretty cool. We got you know the visual side of thing is is really dope. Um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to share that with you. Like once we once pretty soon, I like guess it's gonna come together um, since things have started opening up. Um, with my stuff, I've got a couple. I've been reaching out and got a couple uh, cool, really cool collaborations locked down. And um, I mean, other than that, I'd probably say I'm kind of narrowing in on you know my next batch of, to of tunes. Um, you know, to 
to shop at the right um the right label and stuff like that so i can't help but remark on the uh the records on the wall behind you um that's uh that's pretty pretty big studio mojo man that's uh that's definitely uh that's some juice so can you tell us I mean, about those those? Are, those are mine that's 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 my old man's that's uh that's chicago 27 album the david foster 80s Dude, that's so. So, what was it like growing up with uh, with your dad being so such a, a, a awesome musician? I mean, even though I didn't really like you know sing when I was like you know younger, I I heard it all. And like I was like you know on the tours and everywhere from like five years old to like teens, you know, I'm backstage like listening and vibing. And I'm like, all right. So it, it sunk in, it definitely sunk in. Um, I, I should probably have a one direction one up there. That's one I, I, I did a, I forgot to say, I, I did collab with them. I did one song on their last album. Did you do a song on a one direction album? What was that like? It's cool. It was, it was dope. I wrote, I worked with, uh, um, after hours duo and, um, I remember bringing like my uh, my machine too at the time in there and the laptop and started cooking up this shuffle and it was uh, became wolves on their made in the AM record and um, yeah it's um, it's kind of like it's kind of like Born's uh, like uh, what's it called? Born's uh, Electric Love kind of groove if you remember that one. Um, but that's the. Um, that was a cool. That was a cool little cut for sure. Keeps the lights on. Uh, how did you get that gig? I just I knew um, I knew, the guys from uh, out in Malibu. I've known them for for years. Not not the actual guys from the group, but um, producers. Well, uh, one of them I went to. One of them went to like, Berkeley before I went. And, and with that, so. Berkeley is a, a real, uh, real good incubator, man. I know uh, a lot of cats who came out of there who are doing big things. Um, is was there anything in particular that you learned at Berkeley that you found uh, especially useful? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I definitely became you know better overall. But what I was bummed about is like, man, like I finished in like oh seven, so. Um, it was like it wasn't until like three years later they brought in the um the loud and sterns he's heads up like the the newer electronic music production department and i'm like man i would have loved to be born in that era to like really like just you know what i'm saying so that, that's the only thing it's like we all had to kind of like youtube the shit out of this stuff while baby boomers you know got the hot seat but uh, so uh, speaking of YouTube, um, when I like I do a lot of my learning on YouTube, too, and I love to uh, to find these like hidden gem YouTube channels. Uh, are there any uh, are there any channels that you found particularly educational that you'd like to shout out? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I got um, a bunch of years, by the way. Um, yours truly. Um, I dig a little bit like Zen World's got some cool stuff. Um, occasionally Julian Earl, he's, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. Um, Disciples is, is good at times. Um, but I mean, so there's, there's some times where I'm like, they're like, okay, this is how you make a patch. I'm like, do you make the great, this great bass line, uh, this ba bass sound I'm like, cool. All right. Uh, and then the video's over. It's like, cool. All right. <laughs> So I'm always kind of trying to look for like those hour and a half ones, man. We're like, we're like, okay, if I get the scaffolding of a vibe down and you know, get the foundation and get the, just the key ingredients, man, like that's, that's all I need. Like, all right. With, um, with the style and genre, you kind of like type up and, and just say tutorial, then 
you know, comes up and you occasionally you find the right one. It's like, oh shit, two hours, you got something. And then you go in your own world and do your own chords a little bit. Um, uh, you know, when you're doing these kind of like, uh, quicker workflows, um, yeah. do you, uh, you know, do you use the same stages each time or like, you know, what are the stages of your workflow when you're trying to knock out a beat real quick? Um, I usually have the sessions set up with, um, kind of, I just have a couple different templates. Um, but lately I haven't been like just loading the drum racks all the time and, and because I'm like, I don't want to jinx anything. So I have a couple little basic sounds and I'm like, all right, just something to like, just be organized. And that's all. And that like, just clutter the whole entire session down the line. Other than that, um, yeah, I mean, I'll start, I'll just kind of like, I'll follow, depends on the genre. If it's like a, if it's like a house thing, then you obviously want to start with the drums and the bottom end stuff and then find the toppings later. But if it's something else more in the bass world or something like that, that's future bassish type of stuff, then maybe wanted like start with chords and um that yeah most of the time most of the time riffs or chords are kind of the right call so a favorite uh favorite chord let me see i'll use a lot of ninths and stuff and major seventh if it's like got a ninth in it or something like that is always less cheesy and things like that so that i love that's like my favorite chord but i do, i have no idea what the hell to call it it's just the notes d e and f at the same time like all right next to each other and it's just so sour and just sounds like something really bad's about to happen and i'm like what the hell chord is that? Like, those are all so adjacent, those notes. So I don't know what to call it. Any idea? Well, if you're looking at it in the, in the way of, like, if it's a D minor scale, then you're just playing the first three notes of the... It's not really a chord. It's just the first three notes of the scale. And it's just, like, you could do it as a dissonance, and it's, like, probably hear it in soundtracks and, like, things like that. The good one, man, especially when you got, like, a long slow filter opening on it shit's scary it's, yeah it's yeah. a good time it's a good time so um uh what have been your your projects during the lockdown we've had all this time for study what are you studying i've i, I put an ep out uh in october under through night engine label um there's about five tunes on that one all pretty much did it during the lockdown um and then yeah, that's that was that was one release. So I've been kind of like I've been, you know, between the studio and kind of trying to build my name a little bit too. So between lockdown, I did like there's an EP I have called Glowing. Um, check it out. It's Kill Wheel Glowing on uh, and it's fine on Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, I'll shoot you a link if you want. Um, In the description. Yeah, for sure. Super um, dope. Lockdown's got me. Yeah, that's going less crazy. Just uh, you know, learning shit every day. So, and for me uh, personally, like the first uh, the first couple months of lockdown, I was just reeling. Like it just emotionally just destroyed me for a bit. Uh, and then you know, I had like kind of a turning point where um, you know where things started really coming together, and I started to be uh, back to my positive happy self and become more productive again uh was there any kind of like uh uh you know a, a turning point for you or any any point where like you really started to get into the groove of it uh that you could maybe share for some of the people out there who might be trying to find that groove yeah probably before in the last let me see last 2018 2019 yeah i definitely felt the shift um and a nice little psychedelic experiment experience led me to some a uh, little more musical greatness. And uh, and at this time, than than there was before. Um, yeah, it's just like 
I have less of a problem abandoning something that's not working and just moving on to something that is, you know, is more purposely driven. And um, so that's the one thing that lockdowns put into perspective is just to try to aim for everything, pur- as much stuff purposely driven as, as possible and um, try to be in here, not here so much. What are, what would you say, uh, like, can you elaborate on uh, that sense of purpose? You know, could you could you describe, you know, how you found that, uh, what it is, and how you put that to your music? Yeah, more, try to be more creatively hardy than heady, you know what I'm saying? Um, if that makes any sense. Um, it's, it's very easy to... Um, I got to, I want to explain. It's easy to, um, just make a bunch of, make a bunch of new beats and music. But then I was watching one of your videos a while ago and I, I think you said something that it definitely resonated at the time. Um, you kind of listened to, uh, several songs and kind of pick out your favorites and pick out the ones you feel, feel like purpose, have more purpose and more, more more legs on it basically so that's kind of like that kind of resonated so i was like all right that's that's another that's definitely a step of i need to put in the the arsenal so you know music to me is all about sharing emotions and uh really about trying to trying to make make the listener you know have an emotional experience or take them to an emotional uh place uh, can you tell me a little bit about some of the emotions uh, that you put into your music? Those are the dark. Yeah, it's for like those are the dark side. For example, that has a element of of self surrender, basically, like in a good way, you know. Um, reading what doesn't serve you, sharing that kind of emotion in in a song. I, I find myself writing that premise on a lot of songs um which is not could be could be cool could be like okay get to the next thing there's definitely like a a depth to to it you know and and your songs like it doesn't feel like um it doesn't feel like you're just telling people what you think they want to hear you know and it's uh it's interesting to know where that that comes from because i i think like you know to an extent it's our job as musicians not just to deliver people what they think they want but to kind of like give them what they didn't know they needed you know uh so i think it's uh i think it's interesting that uh you know that that sort of uh introspection and self-work is what fuels the emotional content uh, of your music um you know i i don't think that it's really that necessary for a musician to try to capture every emotion that they they've ever felt, you know, I mean, for me, when it comes to finding, finding style, you know, like I made a whole bunch of different things until I found out like what sorts of emotions I'm, I'm good at expressing, you know, and it's like the emotions that I want to express and what I'm good, good at expressing are kind of two different things. So I generally try to like, you know, I generally try to, 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 to deliver the, the impact that I know is going to work. So I don't know, man, I don't know if I'd stress about, about trying to, trying to put everything in there. You're doing a great, great job with this, uh, this introspective epiphany sound, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, um, thank you, man. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you, it's doing flows, you know, at the, at, in the, in the right moment. Some, and sometimes, Sometimes you gotta get away with it and go chill with the family, and it, that that works for me too. It's like, um, they come back to it with fresh ears. Like we working it late, a certain time at night. Like, all right, I shut it down. And then, then in the morning, you just know by default, you know the tools are gonna come out, and you're gonna start, and you know the beams are gonna go up, and nails are gonna start hammering. So I look at it, man. Have you heard why loudness comes from empty space? In my Composing the Mix workshop, I will teach you how to take away from your mix to give a bigger sound and a deeper impact. Hey.
Were there any kind of uh, epiphanies along the way uh, as a musician that you were like, man, I wish I knew this before. If I had a time machine, I would go back and I would tell myself this piece of information. Do you have any uh, any of those? Yeah, can you share some of them? Yeah, I mean, like if I if I see the you know the technology today and somebody like nineteen twenty that's fresh out of Icon or somewhere like that, you you know, is just burning, you know, and or like holy shit, I wish they had this in college, man. Like I wish I wish I had like access to this, but some of us didn't. Like it's like they didn't have that. It wasn't like really legitimized at the time, even though like at Berkeley there was like engineering and some production, but not to the you know not to the extent that what's you know today's standard. And like they didn't show you Ableton. It was like that was still like a MIDI, MIDI only, possibly at the time. And um, but yeah, I mean like I always I always think. You know, some Rick and Morty time machine. There you go. Just go back and be like, whisper in your young self's ear. But then you could jinx something, and something else could fuck up. I know, and I think like some of the some of the best things that have happened to me have like come out of some of the worst things. Where in the moment I was just like, oh, this is terrible, and then some you know that leads to something else so you really you really never know what's good or bad you know not, not any kind of uh, ultimate sense uh okay cool uh let's talk about gear um your yeah. sound man is clean 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 uh what are you recording with and where are you doing your recordings um i got let me see i got my setup here at home i can show you a little bit um all right, that is the uh, it's the Moog uh, Sub 37. This is a uh, Yamaha Montage. Um, let me see. That's that's a positive grip guitar amp. It's kind of cool. Use it with your phone. This is like my rack here. Um, I don't know if you see it? There's Apollo 8. I don't really use this dude anymore. Um, this is pretty much the preamp warm audio it's not bad it's not like it's not the, it's not like the knee but it's kind of in its ballpark or it's large ballpark um this is the preamp for this microphone it's called a, it's a lewitt tube mic and um yeah it's made in germany and so it's been around like six seven years now or something um See. That's another amp right there. Makes a boogie. Sorry, it's a total mess here. It's a little DJ rigger. Been, been live streaming. DJ set. Always classic. Yeah, man. I don't have the... I've got the XDJ um, Mark IIs. It's like touchscreen ones. But they, they work. They definitely work, so... Well, what were the names of those preamps that you're using? Preamp was a warm audio, uh, dual British preamp, a two channel British preamp, uh, WA two seventy three. It runs about a, a grand or so. It's not bad. The warm audio stuff. That's not my setup over there. Yeah. You shared a but, studio with someone. Who's that? Uh, I, I don't live here. This is, I just I just keep my stuff here. Um, that's uh, that's that's my dad set up whenever he comes out of town. So I mean, they're they're in Santa Barbara right now. So that's super cool. Yeah, it's dope to have family who are into into creative stuff. My dad's a, a, a guitar player by trade as well. Uh, so it's really like you know, growing up, it was so. You know, it's so nice to just have that be like normal, you know, just like a normal part of my yeah. world. Very cool. Yeah, man. Word. Okay, so uh where can where can people find you online? Um so yeah, uh Instagram kill will see. 
Um, uh, Spotify is Kill Will. Um, let me see. SoundCloud is, I think it's Kill Will C is the URL. Check that out, make sure. Yeah, it's Kill Will C. Um, uh, let me see. My site is just willchamplin.com. I didn't. I didn't have like a. I couldn't find a killwill.com yet. So that'd be tough. One of those things where like, uh, yeah, we're gonna need ten thousand dollars. <laughs> real, for real. Uh, okay, cool. Um, and uh, do you have a favorite track you've made? Favorite track? Um, let me see. I don't of course, the Ill Gates it. remix of "Like a Feather," but that that goes without saying. Oh, that's, <laughs> man, that's uh, <laughs> dude. When um, uh, when Ian played that, me, I'm like, oh, fucking shit, bro. Yeah, that's a fun one. But uh, but yeah. So what's 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 your fave? Like uh, let let you know. Well, if you, if you had to pick one, right now, current current fave. I have this track, um, this Eleanor Rigby remix. I just, I did, I cooked it up and I, I did it around their vocals. Right. But then I, I was like, you know, that's going to be mechanical license. And so I was like, I'm just re sing that shit. So I was like, all right, cool. We sing it. Um, and I sent it to, um, a couple other homies that you probably heard of. I don't know if I should say it on air yet because I don't know the collaborate, the collabs kind of coming up. Uh, I don't know if they want me to say anything, but um, I can tell you off here. Uh, okay, yeah. cool. Well, hey, um, any any parting words for our audience here, dude? Uh, it's awesome to be on the on a uh, on um, you know interview with you, man. And um, um, yeah, dude, I've uh, I've indulged quite uh, quite a bit with the the dojo and uh, back then the download and all that, and um, between like the last year, but. Probably gonna get back in. Got still got a little strapped with cash for a second, but um, I definitely, uh, yeah, man, I definitely, uh, definitely fun watching a lot of that stuff, man. So, well, hey, lots of love. Thank you so much for taking the time, and uh, yeah, uh, can't wait to uh, can't wait to hear the final for that tune. Big up. Absolutely, man. Hi, brother. <laughs>